Yes. These days we just laugh, but uh, it would be interesting if uh, one day you stood up and also told us about your profession, or just attacking lawyers and we don't even know what you do. Mr. Speaker, my doctor is uh, 28 years old, and uh, the last time I went to see her on a routine medical checkup, she expressed to me very serious frustration when she hears members of parliament speaking about doctors. It's as if people have simply refused to listen to these medical professionals or to even understand anything about them. So when you hear somebody who claims to be a lawyer embarrassing all lawyers by trying to draw comparisons between a medical intern and a pupil at a law firm who should be paid in Gideri, Mr. Speaker, it is extremely embarrassing that some of these people share a profession with me. Mr. Speaker, when you speak to these doctors, they don't understand how these things are not getting through to people. How can they spend a, a whole three months explaining to you what a medical intern is, but when you stand up here, you say, oh, we should be standardizing and paying them the way we pay pupils at a law firm. Mr. Speaker, it is extremely frustrating, and I'm sure even now, she is losing her mind where she is, and I'm hoping that I can channel some of that energy that I'm sure she's going through right now. Mr. Speaker, when she sees members of parliament saying, oh, now the government has no money, but yet we are looking to hire people called CUE, cabinet assistant secretaries. What are those people called? CASs, Mr. Speaker. From which float, from which, which resources are we going to pay these people? So they tell me every day. They have tried to explain what a medical intern is. They have to bend down to some of these low levels and explain what a CBA means. They have to explain continuity of government, basic concepts. They have to explain, Mr. Speaker, very basic things and it is very, very frustrating for them. So when I hear people here saying they should sit down and talk, I can assure you, because me, I talk to these doctors, they have gotten to a place where they've experienced very serious mental block. There is very serious intransigence on the part of the ministries, on the part of the- uh, uh, Honorable Sifuna, just address your colleagues as honorable senators, not when you hear people. Please. Mr. Speaker, I wish, I wish one day you allow these honorable members to meet these doctors themselves here. When those doctors come here, you will notice there are some honorable members who never go and meet those uh, doctors. I am sure they will not address them the way you are directing me to address them. But since I'm a member of this house, let me address them as you have directed me, <laughs> honorable speaker. <laughs> I'm telling you, Mr. Speaker, it is extremely frustrating. That these uh, doctors have sat down, I, I really applaud the efforts by the committee by Senator Mandago. Because he has given it his all, and he has always invited us. Uh, the last time I was there, the Council of Governors uh, refused to show up. Uh, and we were given information that they were watching the proceedings from the comfort of their offices, uh, Honorable Speaker. And yet we wanted everybody in the, in the building so that we can try and see what the issue is. I went there to the last meeting of the Health Committee after I had none other than the Head of State saying they have agreed on, I think it was 16 out of 18 issues, and there are only two issues remaining. So when I went to Senator Mandago's committee, I was expecting that we will start with those two issues that have not been resolved. But we have members of the Council of Governors sitting there and saying, some of these people here, we don't even know who they are. We don't have recognition agreements with them. How do you begin from scratch, Mr. Speaker? Yet this matter has been going on for a very, very long time. So, Mr. Speaker, in the light of the intransigence, in, in light of the, uh, the, the fight that has been taken to the door of the doctors, uh, Dr. <coughs> Dr. Uh, Bimji, I think he's called the Secretary General of uh, KMPDU, uh, is not known, was not known for wearing hats on his head. He's trying to hide his uh, scar, Honorable Speaker, from a tear gas canister that was fired by a police officer, Mr. Speaker, during exercise of his democratic right to picket and to protest. I gave him my advice that uh, it is why Sifuna wears a sufuria on his head when he goes to Mandaman. Because the damage is lesser, Honorable Speaker, if you are wearing something like a sufuria on your head, if you are hit with a tear gas canister, you will not be hospitalized the way he was. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to express the frustration of the medical practitioners in this house. They are telling me they don't know what language to employ. They have gotten to a place, in fact, Mr. Speaker, for me now, the only appeal I can make uh, to the doctors of this country now we know that these guys, the, the government will never listen to you. The government is never going to honor the CBA agreement that it signed. The government is not going to give you what you want. Now just listen to the Kenyans. For the sake of Kenyans, wait this government out. There is going to be a government, Honorable Speaker, that is going to come.
people in servitude that you cannot, uh, uh, under Article 30, hold somebody under forced labor. You need to pay them for their services. So my appeal to the doctors of this country, I can, I, you know, it's not, rare, it's not common for me to advise somebody to abandon their right, to abandon their cause. I know they are right, but they are speaking to a stone. Mr. Speaker, somebody who has deliberately refused to understand their situation in basic terms such as medical intern. Wait this government out. It won't be long, Honorable Speaker. We are in 2025. I can assure you, when this side goes to that side, Mr. Speaker, and I hope you will be there to see it, and I hope you will be sitting there when I'll be addressing you from that other side, Honorable Speaker, you will not have some of these challenges in this country. I thank you. Senator Sfuna, that is a very good campaign piece. Not necessarily appropriate for the debate before us, but nevertheless, Honorable Mungatana Danson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I would want to make a comment on the statement that was read by Honorable Professor Margaret Kamar on the ECOSOC PAP working session on advancing free movement of labor in Africa. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Professor Kamar is a member of our Pan-African Parliament and a professor who has given us a lot of leadership in the Trade Committee. Mr. Speaker, although I hate that delegation, but Professor Kamar in the Trade Committee of the Pan-African Parliament has been extremely resourceful. And this particular committee of Pan-African Parliament, Mr. Speaker, held a session recently in the Seychelles. And the main purpose of this session, Mr. Speaker, was to discuss the free movement of uh, professionals, free movement of skilled labor across Africa. Mr. Speaker, although I didn't attend, I know that Kenya was very well represented and I, I, I wanted to just take a minute or two, Mr. Speaker, to discuss this statement that my colleague has filed. Mr. Speaker, African nations filed the African Free Continental Trade Area Agreement, and Kenya was the first one to sign in October 7th, 2022. 